Here to help us better understand the situation is Arne Gunderson, a nuclear safety advocate who consults with, with Vermont state government about the Vermont Yankee nuclear power plant. Mr. Gunderson, let's start with Tokyo Electric Power saying it has plugged the big leak in reactor number two uh, using 1,500 liters apparently of water glass or sodium silicate. Uh, help us understand the significance. Well, there's trenches outside the, the building, um, and one of those trenches had an eight-inch hole in it, and that led directly into the ocean. Uh, so they plugged that leak, and that's good news for the, for the ocean. The trench, however, is still getting radioactive liquid from the unit to containment building itself because there's a uh, the containment has been damaged. So c radioactive water is leaking out into the trench now, but now the trench is not leaking out into the ocean. Well, I've come over here to the wall to pull out the photos here. I want to shrink this down just a little bit. What makes this interesting, to the naked eye anyway, if you look at from the out, it's four, heavily damaged, three, destroyed, two, seems from the outside to be the most intact of the buildings. You see the steam coming out here. I assume that's from the water. They're pouring on it to cool it. But explain to the, to, to the layman why the building being in pretty good shape does not te tell you anything about the severity of the problem inside. Yeah, the, the building, that box, is called a reactor building, and inside that is the containment. And um, as pressure started to build up in Units 1 and Unit 3, they vented the hydrogen gases into the reactor building, and that's what blew up. And that the, the uh, dramatic pictures of the explosion were of the reactor building. Um, underneath that rubble is the containment. But in the building that's intact, they didn't vent it in time, and they had a hydrogen detonation inside the containment. And that's kind of like sneezing with your mouth closed and your nose pinched. It's going to pop your eardrums. Well, what happened on Unit 2 is that as a result of that explosion, the containment itself broke. And so now radioactive liquids are leaking out of the containment into that trench. I want to shrink this down for a second. I want to come back to the pictures in a minute. But for now, I want to just talk about how much water. Because the company says 11,500 tons of radioactive water. We're not minimizing this at all. Going into the Pacific Ocean, that's about enough water to fill five large swimming pools. The Pacific Ocean, as you can see, this is, in terms of the volume of the Pacific Ocean, Mr. Gunderson, this is literally a drop in the bucket. However, you think the company is understating the concern here about the radioactivity? Well, they pumped, the, they needed to empty tanks on site um, because they, the, the tanks had concentrations of liquid that were 500 times what was permissible. But the stuff they needed to put in them was much more radioactive than that. So the 11,000 uh, tons that they pumped overboard today was to clear tanks so the more radioactive liquid could come behind it. The leak that they just fixed, though, for the last couple of, um, uh, couple of weeks has been leaking something on the order of seven tons a day not of the 500 time concentration, but of the much more concentrated radioactivity into the, into the ocean. So there's, there's a lot of radiation in the ocean.